tell us about uh, the, the completely unique nature of the Sahrawi people. The Sahrawi people have lived throughout the years as nomadic lifestyle, generally speaking, until obviously the, the, the colonization was started when all the, these borders were drawn. Most of this border, once this border were drawn, they forced the Sahrawis to alter their way, their lifestyle in general. But nonetheless, the Sahrawi people have kept living a, a different, a rather distinctive culture and way of living compared to, I would say the, com the closest to our culture will be the Mauritanians. And even if I go to Mauritania, I will be distinctly um, called out that I'm Sahrawi. Very, 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 very similar as far as the tradition, as far as the Hassaniya, the language spoken in Western Sahara and Mauritania, the, the traditional uh, customs as far as Malh Darra, like Muhammad says, but I personally was born and raised and grew up in the refugee camp southwest of Algeria. And in there, I went, I've attended schools in Algeria. And the, 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 in comparison, as right now, when you look at what characterizes Sahrawis, why they are so different historically or culturally, it, it goes without saying that the Morocco, and for example, in occupied territory, have invested in the what we call the Moroccanization project, which is basically trying to assimilate the Sahrawi culture into the Moroccan culture, trying to um, make it look as if it's as close as possible. But I, I Mohammed, who is from the from that side, can tell you that that failed, that just the Sahrawi people have completely different way of doing things. Nomad lifestyle is the elders to this day, even though they live either in the occupied territory, forced to live in the city side or in the refugee camps where they cannot be going, living their nomad's life simply because it's rather hard and complicated. They continue to stay distinct from Algerians, distinct from Mauritanians, distinct from, 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 um, from the Moroccans. Obviously, uh, the people of Western Sahara uh, are very distinct in the matter the way they clock, the way they speak, the way they act, the way they uh, live their daily life. Uh, as for the language, the spoken dialect there is Hassaniya, and Hassaniya is almost 70% Arabic, classically Arabic, uh, but there are some um, um, uh, words of terminology from from Spanish and French as well, and now some from even the Moroccan Derija or Algerian Derija because of the interaction with these populations. And as you know, there is uh, no pure dialect or no pure culture because everything now is hybrid. And so that's why we have all this mingling uh, in the globalization world. So um, when it comes to customs, um, so how do they have different ceremonies? And when it comes to weddings, when it comes to celebrations, when it comes to uh, the way they live their daily life, for example, the way they greet each other, uh, the way they talk to each other, the way they celebrate life each every day. So uh, in many aspects, these um, practices differ a lot from uh, the way it's done or it's practiced in uh, Morocco or even in Algeria or sometimes in Mauritania. And so basically, um, even the mentality, it's different. And in the way that Sahrawis, um, the way they live their life is actually way different from the ways Moroccans live their daily life. Uh, the thinking, the perception, and also uh, the way they look at things. Uh, for example, politically saying, educationally, culturally, Tell us a little bit about the organization of African, of African Union or organization of African states as it was in the past. How did uh, this, this uh, body um, view the Sahrawi independence struggle? There are two kind of eras. When, the Af when Morocco was a member of the African Union and when Morocco was not. At the beginning, when the Western, when the proclamation of the Sahrawi uh, Democratic Repo Arab Democratic Republic, and was a member of the African Union, the Morocco saw that as a basically uh, protested the existence of the Polisario or the existence of the Sadr or the Sahrawi uh, uh, Arab Democratic Republic in the same organization and decided to exit that organization in protest and didn't return until two or three years ago. 
coming back to the African Union. And the majority of the African nations, uh, well, all of the African nations have undergone some kind of uh, colonization. So this, the consensus among the African nations, not all of them, obviously, but the majority of them do side with the Sahrawi people, with Sahrawi government, and all come together in the form that decolonization is not complete until Western Sahara have given the right to exercise the um, freedom of uh, the referendum in, in, in or decolonization process process completed in Western Sahara. And just add some of to what my friend and colleague here just said. It is very obvious that the African Union has been involved in the conflict of Western Sahara for so many decades. And actually, uh, it's the African Union that called for the referendum and the organization for the referendum in Western Sahara upon the request of uh, the late deceased uh, King of Morocco, Hassan II, when he said that he's willing to accept a referendum and to accept the consequences of this referendum that would take place in Western Sahara. This was during the early 80s when the African Union accepted the membership and recognized the Sahara Republic as uh, a member. Uh, Morocco withdrew from from this organization and protested this kind of decision. So when the UN adopted the referendum as part of the peace settlement plan, as you were aware of, uh, Morocco also accepted this as it was brokered by the UN in 1989 when James Baker was the UN special envoy. And so uh, the idea was not really an idea of the UN, but rather an idea of the African Union. And so the African Union members uh, have been well aware of the issue of Western Sahara since the beginning. But the issue that we're facing here is that in Africa, there are countries who are pro-Morocco and countries who are pro-Western Sahara, mainly dividing the continent into two different blocks, the Francophone and the Anglophone. So mostly the Anglophone countries are more lean towards Western Sahara, while the Francophone are opposing because of the ties between the French-speaking countries and um, Morocco. And here I would like to stress the fact that this is also because of France. France actually has been back in Morocco since the beginning. And France is always uh, afraid that it's going to lose um, its... Um, its power, or let's say its uh, guardianship over Africa, because most of African countries were African colonies in the past. And so France is still benefiting economically, politically, and geographically from Africa, and it doesn't want to lose that kind of power. And so <clears throat> it has been intervening within Africa into African affairs through those countries. I would name Gabon, I would name Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, etc. While on the other block, there is Kenya, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, uh, and other countries who are English speaking countries who are opposing this and who wants Africa to liberate from this Francophone you know, uh, dominance. Mm -hmm.